Wading into War, Chapter 3. Police Captain Oscar Berman glared down at me. Flanking him were two of the largest policemen I had ever seen. Their bulk was barely contained inside their uniforms. If they were meant to intimidate me, they were earning their paycheck. I sat at a little table in the interrogation room in the downtown station. My wrists were still held by the handcuffs, and I was working my fingers to try to keep the blood flowing. Tell me again, Wade, what the hell you were doing at the crime scene? I took in a deep breath. My ribs still ached from when the arresting cops had thrown me down on the floor and cuffed me. It made breathing deep painful, but I needed the, that pain to keep me sharp and get me extricated from this little predicament. Captain, I began, putting as much calmness in my voice as possible, as I've already told you, don't condescend to me again. Berman's voice was filled with warning. Uh, understood, sir. I was hired by my client to locate Wendell Rosenblatt, who, who's your client? I can't reveal that information. Yes, you can. It's now a murder investigation, and you're the prime suspect. Anger flashed in me. Why? Just because I was there? One of the officers actually cracked a smile at that. Yeah, said Berman, a hint of the obviousness in his voice. That's enough, ain't it? New beads of sweat formed over the old ones on the back of my neck. I was in deep, and I knew it. What about the partial plate I gave you? The one on the getaway car? Oh, you mean the phantom car you claim you saw the shooter leave in? The one for which we have no evidence? Just look it up. I gave you all three numbers of the plate and make and model. Berman considered me for a moment. Despite his bluster, he was a decent cop and would follow leads wherever they pointed, or so his reputation would have one believe. But he also liked a high clearance rate, and as much as I hated to admit it, he had me dead to rights. We're working that. Don't fret your little blank brain about it. You just need to tell me again how you came to be at my crime scene. Personification of a crime scene. Something Berman trained me to do when I was a cop, and interrogated my share of crooks. Never a good thing if you're on the opposite side. My client hired me to find Wendell Rosenblatt. He was supposed to arrive in Houston last week from Europe. Know where he was doing in Europe? My client didn't give me particulars. Rosenblatt was a journalist, so he was probably covering the war overseas. Here's the odd thing. He never arrived by ship in Houston. He actually made port in Galveston. Why is that odd? Berman asked. I could tell a sliver of curiosity had punctured the captain's brain. Because he told my client he'd disembark in Houston with a bombshell of a news story. He was to meet my client in Houston straight from the boat. But the boat made an unscheduled stop in Galveston. And somehow, Mr. Rosenblatt disembarked. Then how'd he get up here? I mentally culled through the notes and leads I'd leapt I'd learned the past few days. My client knew he'd gotten off the boat in Galveston because Rosenblatt sent my client a telegram. It was written in some kind of code, but my client translated it for me. Rosenblatt was fearful that if the information he possessed got out, it might change everything. Despite himself, Berman stepped closer to the table. What do you mean, everything? I gazed straight up at him. I mean the war. We're not in it. Not yet. Berman raised an eyebrow. Are you telling me that whatever Rosenblatt had would be enough to get America in the war? I nodded. That's what my client claimed. We continued to talk over the case. I knew the captain was interested because he actually sat down across from me. He even leaned in at certain points. For my time in the department, I knew the man loved puzzles. He devoured all the word games in the paper every day and usually had a book of crosswords at his desk. However, despite all the talking and all the obvious interest he showed for the case, Berman still hadn't removed the cuffs. It wasn't until there was a tap on the door that we were interrupted. Berman got up and conferred with someone. The captain frowned, glanced back at me, 
then left the room, leaving the two hulks to glower at me. I rattled the bracelets. Any chance you guys have the keys? They stared straight ahead and remained mute.